the 2022 Honda Pilot Sport all-wheel drive. Aloha guys, it's Joe Tunney and I'm here in Kehola State Park just south of Waikoloa on the beautiful big island of Hawaii. And today we're taking a look at the sort of new uh, 2022 Honda Pilot Sport all-wheel drive and you're gonna see right away that there's some distinctive uh, styling uh, styling characteristics on the new 2022 Honda Pilot Sport all-wheel drive we're gonna take a look around uh, this one we're up to 7500 miles on it we're gonna do a long-term review of what it's like uh, owning one of these not only brand new off the lot but with a couple of miles on the odometer let's start by taking a look under the hood So the Pilot in this configuration has been around for, this is the seventh year that it's been around. This one has 280 horsepower and a little bit better than 260 pound-feet of torque. So long as this generation has been around, that has been the exact power output. The engine hasn't changed now for seven model years of the Pilot. Back when this car first came out, it had an optional ZF, uh, ZF being a German transmission company, probably the best transmission company in the world. You could get a ZF nine speed automatic transmission as an option. It is standard on the 2022 Honda Pilot Sport all wheel drive. Now we've been averaging about 22 and a half miles per gallon on this one. And so for a four wheel drive that weighs almost 4,400 pounds, it's actually pretty reasonable uh, gas mileage for something that seats so many people so comfortably. Let's take a look around. Now, style-wise, it is a really nice looking sport utility. The 2022 Honda Pilot all-wheel drive sport does come with black painted 20 inch wheels as standard and continental cross contact tires as standard as well. From first-hand experience, I can tell you that the tires are really good on-road as well as off-road on a lava field like this. Obviously, it's not designed for just hardcore four-wheel driving or anything like that, but it's reasonably competent in reasonable situations that require you to go off-road. Let's take a look inside. You know, one thing about the Pilot is that the wheelbase isn't super long. It's only about 111 inches. Compare that to a car like uh, my beloved Infiniti G35 Coupe, which actually had a 112 inch wheelbase. And so this has a shorter wheelbase than even that smaller sports car. So one of the thoughts is, is that maybe the interior room is compromised, especially for people in the back seat. Well, taking a look in the back seat, I'm actually really comfortable at six feet tall and 185 pounds, tons of headroom, Tons of room for three adults in the middle row. You have that theater style seating so that you sit higher than the people in front of you. And so that uh, looking through the windshield experience is not so different than if you were sitting in the front seat. Let's take a look in the third row seat. So if I flip this up, this is how it works, you know, if you're jumping into the back seat. And again, as a full grown adult, the first thought is, man, this is gonna be super duper uncomfortable for people sitting in the very back. It's actually not uncomfortable at all. You know, it seats two adults very comfortably. Again, it's six feet tall. I have more than enough uh, leg room. My legs aren't even touching the middle row seat. And so lots of headroom, lots of room in the back. It's one of the more comfortable third row seats you'll ever sit in, especially in a midsize sport utility. In fact, it's the single most comfortable third row seat of a midsize sport utility. Let's take a look in the trunk. Now the Pilot is based off of the Honda Odyssey minivan. One attractive distinction on the Pilot is that it'll, it will tow 5,000 pounds, unlike the Odyssey. Also, there's a lot more space 
in the Odyssey than there is, spare tire just pointing out, is down here. And so the, there's a lot more space in the Odyssey than there is in the Pilot, but there's still 16 cubic feet of uh, cargo space in the Pilot and over 150 cubic feet of interior volume for passengers. Let's take a look in the driver's position. One thing about base models, uh, sport utilities are by far and away the biggest profit center uh, other than full-size pickup trucks in the automobile industry. And they're kind of designed so that the base model is kind of like the runt of the litter and then you want to get the deluxed out one. The sport replaces the LX and the EX for 2022 and the sport comes in at about $40,000 where a fully loaded one would be just to click over fifty thousand dollars you know with leather and some other electronics it doesn't cost that much for the manufacturer to put that stuff in the car so it's far more profit on those top line models therefore most base model sport utilities are really basic inside and that is absolutely not the case with the 2022 honda pilot sport in fact if it reminds me of anything it reminds me of like the toyota 4runner or the Toyota FJ Cruiser, where the base model is kind of the cool one, that when you get them all super loaded up, that sometimes that stuff can be a little bit superfluous because the base model has the goods. The cloth doesn't look cheap by any stretch of the imagination. The layout of the dash, it has LED headlights as standard, has an eight inch display as standard. The display is kind of wonky, I'm gonna be honest, on the Pilot, it's a little bit difficult to decide the transmission that as much as I love the ZF nine speed automatic transmission I can't stand the way that they do this with the shift world where you know you pull back for reverse and you push a button for D and sometimes you need to use the paddles and so that's a little bit unnecessarily complicated where just a shifter or just standard push buttons would be a lot easier but it is what it is I mean there's no vehicle in the world that doesn't have its faults and the faults of this vehicle are pretty modest out on the open road, it's a really comfortable driver, and we're going to take it out uh, for a drive here in a second. The displays are really comfortable. The space is really comfortable. It's a pretty sweet truck. It hasn't changed much in seven model years. In fact, it's changed very little at all in the past seven years, but what was once one of my very favorite sport utilities of all sport utilities in the world way back in 2015, 2016, is still at the absolute top of my list. And when we take it for a drive, we're going to find out why. So P is for park, D is for drive, we're just going to push D. And because this has Honda sensing, you're going to see road mitigation signage and, and you know different kinds of alerts on your screen. But it's nice to know that the safety equipment is all standard in the 2022 Honda Pilot Sport all-wheel drive. Lots of pretty birds out. It's a beautiful morning here just south of Waikoloa on the big island of Hawaii. And as we drive through Kihola Park, you're going to realize that everything around us is lava. It's uh, from Mauna Loa, actually, which exploded in the 1860s. And there's a big flow of lava that came all the way out this way from Kona up to Waikoloa. And a lot of these parks have these rocky roads that are built into the lava. So four-wheel drives are very, very popular here in the big island of Hawaii because we like to go to these beaches that aren't on everybody's uh, internet search, so to speak. But sometimes these roads can be a bit bumpy, and in a comfortable vehicle like this, it is actually a pleasure, to be honest, to drive even over these pretty rough roads. Now, one of the big criticisms overall about the Pilot is that it's pretty much just a lifted Honda Odyssey with four-wheel drive without the interior dimensions of the Honda Odyssey. And although I agree with that, this vehicle reminds me of something from way back in 1990 that I really liked when I first started selling cars in California. And that is the 1990 Mazda MPV four-wheel drive. 
one of the most interesting vehicles that you probably have never heard of. They were so popular when they came out. Mazda didn't build that many of them and we sold out super, super quickly each year that we had them available. Because although they were a minivan, they had this great personality to them. They were just tall enough to be practical. They were just chunky enough where it didn't matter who you were. You felt comfortable driving it. And they had a nice quality to them that felt really robust and substantial. That's one of the great things about the Pilot. The build quality is just, it's not good, it's superior. It's right up there with vehicles like the Toyota Land Cruiser, Toyota FJ Cruiser, other vehicles that are at the absolute top of the build quality spectrum. The Pilot is right up there with it. Now I mentioned that short wheelbase. The short wheelbase actually has some uh, performance value. And so the longer the wheelbase, it stretches out the opportunity for more interior volume. Shorter wheelbase to a certain point can give you a little bit of a more alert driving response. So I go back to 1990. The two hot vehicles uh, back in 1990 were the Ford Mustang GT and the Chevy IROC Camaro. Well, crazy as it sounds, those guys first went zero to 60 in 6.2 seconds, both of them did, which is exactly how fast the 2022 Pilot all-wheel drive Sport goes, zero to 60, also in 6.2. But those low to the ground, big chunky tire performance cars handled the skid pad at 0.82 Gs of lateral acceleration because they're sports cars. Believe it or not, this guy as equipped also pulls 0.8, uh, 0.82 Gs of lateral acceleration. It handles uh, not so different than yesterday's sports car, but does it in a way where lots and lots of people in all their gear can be extremely comfortable. And then even as you hear the RPMs rise, it's not obtrusive or anything like that road noise going over gravel and bounciness. You know, a little bit loud. This isn't nearly as sumptuous as a Cadillac Escalade or a Toyota Land Cruiser, like I mentioned before. But again, it still feels confidence inspiring, even at 7,500 miles. There's no squeaks or rattles or anything like that, even going over some heavier bumps. And then from there, we're just going to take it out for a nice drive and let you kick back and enjoy the ride.